I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dr. David Sanford, who is one of our senior scientists on staff and has a lot of experience working with the display space. Hi, Dave. Would you like to introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, I'm David Sanford. I coordinate research efforts at Sirion and have a background in synthesizing, functionalizing, dispersing, and characterizing nanoparticles, including oxides, metals, and halides in aqueous and uh, non-aqueous solvent systems. I've worked with customers in a number of different application spaces, including uh, optical coatings to deliver nanoparticles that integrate with their system. Thanks, Dave. What are some of the nanomaterials that are of interest in the display space and why? Uh, in general, uh, we found customers in the display space have been interested in nanoparticles that provide increased refractive index that they can then leverage in several different ways in their systems. The two materials of most interest thus far have been titanium dioxide and zirconium dioxide because they offer high refractive index, low visible light absorption, and good transparency at small particle sizes. The challenge is formulating them for compatibility with customer systems so they can leverage the benefits of high refractive index without sacrificing other performance attributes. Very interesting. What are the typical particle sizes of these types of nanomaterials? Well, most of the nanoparticles we make at Sirion are less than 30 nanometers in primary particle size. The particle size of titanium zirconia is critical in achieving the highest refractive index boost possible while maintaining good transparency. If the particle size is too large, transparency could be negatively impacted. If the particle size is too small, it may limit the increase in refractive index. Since everything we do is tailor-made for our customers, we also try to understand their desired performance specifications and optimize our titania and zirconia accordingly. So I'm working with a lot of the customers at Sirion, and I know that a lot of our titania and zirconia are dispersion-based systems. What type of solvent systems do you typically work with? Well, like you said, most of our customers in the display space request dispersions. So they can then include them in their formulations, which then they code into spe onto specific substrates. Uh, both of our titanium zirconia dispersions can be uh, delivered in water or in a variety of uh, non-aqueous solvents like toluene or PGMBA. Oftentimes our customers will also request that we disperse their nanoparticles in their own proprietary solvents to ensure compatibility with their end use systems. So when working with exotic solvent systems or a customer's proprietary solvent system under an NDA, how do you ensure the nanoparticles will remain monodispersed and stable in dispersion form? Well, typically with these uh, systems, there needs to be some type of capping agent or stabilizing chemistry present in the dispersion to maintain the particle stability. Once we understand what solvent system our customer desires, we try to identify the optimal stabilizing chemistry to include in the dispersion. This not only maintains the integrity of the dispersion, but is critical to our customers because it enables the highest particle to capping agent concentration possible, and thus the highest refractive index boost, while, while then preserving transparency and ensuring compatibility with their end use system. Yeah, I get a lot of questions about the concentration of these dispersions. Typically, how high can you get with the titania and zirconia specifically? Uh, for titania, we've been able to prepare around 40 weight percent dispersions without seeing significant viscosity issues. For zirconia, we need, we've been able to get as high as about 50 weight percent. For both materials, we've worked with our customers to determine the trade-offs of increasing the concentration, while, but also increasing the viscosity. The goal is to always get the customer their best performing dispersion possible, which often involves balancing attributes like concentration with ease of use. Okay, changing gears a bit. What happens when you successfully develop a formulation for a customer? I'm assuming the customer will want larger quantities of the material. What does that process look like at Sirian Nanomaterials? At Sirian, we have an internal protocol we call Design for Manufacturing, or DFM, to ensure what is developed at lab scale has a clear path to commercialization. Once a lab scale formula is defined, it's handed off to our development team to assess its robustness and cost effectiveness. They will typically scale the formula to tens of kilograms, what we would call pilot scale, so our customer can accredit a larger batch to ensure its uh, performance is identical to the lab scale version. This is the most important step in our uh, scale up process because the formula that comes out of the development team's work is generally straightforward for our manufacturing team to scale to commercial batch sizes. Why is that? If a customer is asking for metric tons of product and you've only scaled the formulation to tens of kilograms, it seems like there's still significant scaling to be done. Is that not correct? Uh, yes, there's still work to be done, but we found that once a formula has been successfully scaled to one of our pilot reactors, 
The synthetic method, the processing conditions, and robustness are pretty well understood. And at that point, the formula is essentially a direct handoff to our manufacturing team who has significant experience translating pilot reactor formulas to our commercial scale reactors that are capable of manufacturing hundreds of metric tons of nanoparticles per year. Interesting. So yeah, going back to my salesperson mentality, it is so critical for our customers that lab scale formulations can be transitioned to the real world. So it's great to hear that Sirion has this unique business model of designing, scaling, and manufacturing customized nanomaterials to solve customers' problems and challenges in this play space. Dave, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me today. To wrap things up, I'll ask one more question. Just out of curiosity, what is your favorite part about your job? Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, uh, favorite part of my job is meeting with customers to understand their unmet needs and then working with them to develop solutions to those needs to enable new and improved products. Yeah, I love hearing about the different types of application areas our customers are working with. So yeah, I can totally relate to your answer. And that's all the time we have today, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Don't hesitate to reach out to me directly at chris.skipper at syrianano.com, or you can visit us at our website at www.syrianano.com.